What is time management? We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to be talking about prioritizing our workloads. Um, and this works not only whether you're going to be brand new into injury, if you're just leaving school, or whether you're an experienced workplace individual, but you're looking at joining a new business, a new sector, a new group. So loads of different ideas all the way through. I'm going to talk about procrastination, absolutely something we know a lot about today. Um, but actually, I think something that when we know we're doing it is really, really easy to overcome. Couple of time management solutions. Now, I've not gone overboard today because I think we all have different ideas, different techniques, different ways of working. So for me, I've not gone too overboard with what I've come up with in terms of solutions, but a couple of my personal favorites. Um, and then the big one, get organized. And I talk about this all the time to my team. I talk about this in terms of time management, working remotely, and you know, actually being effective within the workplace. So that get organized is really, really key. Every interview I ever do, the person sits across from me, whether it's remotely, whether it's face to face, and everyone says, I'm great at managing my time. I work well as an individual, but I like working with a team as well. And that's what we all say. And the absolute key for me is whenever you're talking about time management is, yeah, you're expected to be good at time management, but it's how you do that. How do you organize and plan yourself? How do you actually ensure those priority tasks are achieved, whereas those that are potentially not actually essential just get pushed to the back of the list or reordered and reorganized? So for me, whenever we're talking about time management, it's that idea of how do we actually do it? Not just the idea of being good at time management um, and being able to increase our productivity, but actually how do we do it? And that's really what the focus we'll talk about today. Um, use the chat box. Let us know your thoughts on this. But what are the benefits of good time management? As I said earlier, everyone says they are good at time management. But thinking about you as an individual, your workplace, your school, your friends, whatever, what are some of the benefits of good time management? Use the chat box. Please, please, please give us some ideas. Give us your views and opinions. Because I've got a few coming up, but they're not always right. Although mostly. Lovely stuff. We've got some answers coming through. So we've got efficiency, getting more out of the time you have, um, higher quality of work, becoming less anxious, efficiency again from a few more people, um, completing more work, feeling organised, deadlines, punctual, absolutely. Oh, I love punctual. Yes, uh, prioritising tasks, deadlines again. Um, less stress and less mistakes. And really like that stress one as well, something we talk a lot about over the next couple of sessions as well. And as always, you guys have come up with a greater list than I have. Um, I had greater productivity and efficiency. I think you guys said that five, six, seven, eight times, probably more. Um, and if you are productive at work, that obviously helps everyone. You know, I don't think we need to talk too much about that one. The next one I had, which I'm not sure came through via the chat, was a better professional reputation or relationship, you could add on the end of that. Whatever it is, whatever term you kind of think about that, but I would hope, Lottie, please disagree as always, everyone knows that I turn up on time, that I meet my deadlines, that I help others, that I, if I say I've got a call at nine o'clock, if I am running late, which does sometimes unfortunately happen, I message that individual and say, I'm going to be five minutes late. Half the time I say, I'm going to be five minutes late and I'm about 30 seconds late. But again, it's about making sure you make people aware. So you're being professional um, and you keep people updated. So if you are going to be late, and that goes across all walks of life as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to be late, pick up the phone and phone and let someone know you're going to be late. Let them know that, that you know your train's late, your bus is late, or that your order's overrun. Whatever it is, just please make sure you're using that opportunity to let people know, especially those of you potentially going for interviews over the next few months, that exciting thing of, you know, checking your bus timetable when the bus decides to break down. Everyone understands these things, but the first and most important thing is pick up the phone and let them know you're going to be late. So please make sure you don't send a text or an email, make sure you pick up the phone and actually speak to that person or at least speak to someone who can get a message. It's something really, really important. That builds that professional reputation for me. 
less stress. Something over the last, what, 15 months, I've talked about continuously all the way through all the sessions that I've run on various topics. And if you are good at time management, you're less stressed. And that includes workplace stuff as well as personal stuff. I know that if I've got enough time to get back home, get dinner ready, sort the little one, do all the amazing stuff that I have to do when I finish work, I am less stressed and I can then switch off in the evenings. And then no, again, Lottie, please disagree, but this is something I really, really push with my team to set your deadline for your time. You know, if you're going to finish at four, finish at four. You know, if that's your time, you're finishing. Um, and they quite often get a little message from me saying, why haven't you finished yet? Why are you still online? And it's that making sure that you're less stressed and you've got the support that you need. Um, another big one, if you're good at time management, you're effective at your work, you're productive, you've got a great professional reputation, you're overall less stressed, potentially more happy as an individual, therefore you should see opportunity for advancement. Um, it sounds simple, it sounds straightforward and potentially obvious, but within my team, if we're looking at people to progress within their roles, we look at, are they actually good at their job that they do right now? Basically, can they do it effectively in the time they've got? And we actually have these conversations on a regular basis. And these are some of the core things we look at. Can they actually do their job currently in their hours? Or are they stressed about it? Are they regularly needing additional support outside the norm? Um, so it's something that really, really does come into consideration when you're looking at getting development in terms of apprenticeships, jobs, careers, and personally. Um, and the big one for me, the one I always kind of come back to, is that it helps you in all aspects of your life, good time management. You've got the opportunity to actually achieve what you want to achieve. You know, if you're saving for a house, for instance, you know, actually being able to prioritise, set deadlines, arrange things around, interviews, whatever it might be, is actually really, really important. So to actually achieve what you want to do professionally and personally, I do believe you need a really good level of time management. Otherwise, how are you going to get everything done? You know, in reality, I don't think there's ever enough hours in the day to do all the stuff I want to do, unless I plan and arrange things and, and annoy people by saying, no, I'm not coming out on Saturday morning to do a play date because I'm doing X, Y, Z. But it's actually having that plan in your head and getting it organized. Um, so next one then, moving on a little bit more into the workplace, whether that's home, school, apprenticeship, current work, future work. Think about how you currently prioritize your workload. What do you do? How do you know what you need to get done and when? Use the chat box again, let us know how you do this. Lottie and I will probably hold up in a minute our to-do list. Lottie will undoubtedly have hers to hand somewhere, um, which, there you go. Um, so think about those things that we do and use. Right, we've got some good answers coming through. We've got work plan, um, diaries, so monthly timetable, um, outlook calendars, definitely, I use that religiously. Um, writing everything down, calendars with deadlines, Trello we've got on there as well. We oh, use Trello. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try and use Trello. Um, I like uh, Laura's answer here on a Sunday, plan your week. That's a good one. I like to do that on a Friday afternoon, set my plan for that following week. Um, yeah, making this sticky notes on laptops. Oh, yeah. Yeah phone calendars, note applications, uh, and a stage is coming with urgent or not, or important or not. Love Fantastic, that one. Fantastic, yeah. Um, daily lists, Asana, I don't know if I've heard of that. Um, deciding what is most important to do. Yeah, nice one. Fabulous, and again, your list is probably better than mine, but there's a couple of bits I just wanted to pick up on. Um, and we joke about this, Lot and I, virtually every day about whose to-do list is longer, have we rewritten it recently, have we colour-coded it, as someone went for a phase of doing recently, but actually collect everything into one place, whether it's Trello, whether it's sticky notes, whether it's an old school notebook, whether it's your phone, whatever it is, collect it all together and actually create a list. And that's one of the big things that I keep, keep, keep telling people across apprentices, work colleagues friends whatever it is people come to me and say well i want to go and build an extension all right crack on then but what are you going to do where's your list and it's actually creating that 
idea of what needs to be done, a work plan, a workflow, whatever terms you want to use. Um, then the big one that I think naturally leads onto this is what is actually urgent and what is important. Um, and I think that came through in the chat, but actually, what do I need to get done now? What do I need to get done today? What do I need to get done this week? Or what is actually important, but there is no time to it? I have so many plans and ideas where Lottie and I will jump up on a call and I say, let's do X, Y, Z. Is it urgent? No. Is it important? Yes. But is it actually urgent now? No. So we put it onto a one day list or someday we're going to do this to do this. And it's making it that it's clear to people what the priorities are and ask for help with this. I can't tell you enough about if you're sat there, whether it's work, school, apprenticeship, uh, whatever it is, ask people for help. You know, our team will jump on calls with and say, look, I've got this huge to do list. I'm not sure what I need to get done. And Lottie and I will do about two seconds ago, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. They can do that. Let's crack on with these bits. And that freeing up, the lack of stress that causes and the acceptance and communication support you get with that is really, really important. But it only comes from you as an individual asking for help in the right way. You know, do not expect your manager, your teacher, your apprenticeship coach, whoever it is, to come to you and go, what's your to-do list, what do you need help with? You need to go and seek that support. And I don't know anyone in the world who doesn't mind answering questions if they're presented in the right way. If you come to me on a Monday morning say, right, I've got this huge list to do and I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would probably have said, why didn't you talk to me last week about it? So make sure when you are talking about those queries and questions, you're thinking about the time to go to negotiate with it. Um, and then that kind of leads to that assess the value. And I'm not just talking about money, even though that's a little symbol I put in there. But actually, if you've got this idea that I want to create this report, which is going to revolutionize the world, but has nothing to do with my business, potentially the value is huge for you at that moment in time. But others around you might have a different set of values. They might have something different they want to be completed because that's an actual working document, potentially it's a client report. So actually remember to assess the value. Going through your junk email, which can take hours and hours and hours, let's be honest at this moment in time, is that adding value when you've got 100 real emails you've got to deal with potentially? So really assess that value and work out a strategy for dealing with that. Couple more, and the only one I'm gonna really talk about on these, unless you have any questions, which please do shout in the chat, is know when to cut. It's something that some people say I'm an expert at, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, but actually I get a list of stuff to do. And I get these ideas from various department heads, from different owners, directors, all of this stuff. And everyone comes and goes, what do you think about this? Yeah, but what's the value of that? Is it important? Is it urgent? And actually knowing when to cut something from your list is hugely important. Um, and it's something I talk about regularly, especially with Lottie and the team, about, you know, you say you want to do this little session about development tasks. Is it important? Is it urgent? What's the value? Do you need to prioritise it right now when you've got 30 progress you need to do? And it's about making sure you look at that and working out when to cut, when to put onto your to-do someday list, whatever it might be. As always, any thoughts, views, opinions, please use the chat box, let me know. Use the reactions as well. If there's thumbs up. I always like a round of applause as well. Everyone knows that. Um, for me, that then gets me thinking, right, I've got this great idea about how I'm going to prioritise. But actually, it's really easy to get into a habit of losing time. And there's various ways this can occur. Um, procrastination, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, the big one is poor personal planning and scheduling. You know, because I've said all along that everyone says they're amazing at time management, which rightly everyone could be, but it's about those examples of how you actually do it, as I said earlier. But when we are scheduling our diaries, it's quite easy to get ready and get everything organized, make sure you've got time to do your emails, potentially make sure you've got a 45 minute window where you can do those sporadic phone calls for inquiries and things like that. But sometimes other people schedule our diaries for us. Sometimes people drop in a meeting for a Monday morning at eight o'clock when it's your first day back from holiday potentially. And actually making sure you build blockers potentially into your diary is really, really important. So if you are back from holiday, perhaps put, 
an hour in your diary to say, do not book any meetings. Um, you can be rude in that if you really want, depending on your workplace and your work diary. Um, poor delegation. If you've got the opportunity to delegate and you don't delegate, that means you're basically doing everyone's work for yourself. So it's very, very difficult to do that and then to actually get the time back. Um, the big one that I used to face when we were in the office and the office environment is interruptions by people without appointment. Basically, people coming up to the desk and going, can I have two minutes? I actually feel like just before lockdown, I was at the place where I was going to get a little sign that said something rude, but probably just please leave me alone. I'm actually doing some work. But that's something that when we get into the workplace, when we return potentially to the office, where we have no social distancing, that potential habit of people interrupting you when you're mid-flow will become more and more common again, potentially. You know, working remotely, you have the opportunity to turn notifications off, turn phones off, whatever it is if you're doing it. Not so much if you're back in the office environment, work, school, or on your apprenticeship and stuff like that. So thinking of a way to create a natural barrier without seeming rude or closed off is going to be really, really important, I think, moving forward again. Um, Poor use of technology. Um, I can't tell you enough times I've seen people use messaging, phones, all of this stuff, and actually what they really need is on an email and it could be answered in two minutes rather than a 20 minute phone call. And I think just looking at why you're using the certain format you're using, I put fax on there. If anyone knows what fax is, they can let me know in the chat box because I've got no idea anymore what it is. Um, reading junk mail, I said that earlier, but actually I get CC'd into probably about 75 emails a day at least of stuff that I don't need to know. In reality, I don't need to know it um, and I'm regularly copied in and by the time you read that, that's probably about 45 minutes of my day gone. So actually reading junk email, not just that lovely junk folder where all the rubbish stuff gets sent to, but it's also that folder of stuff where you're copied in just because someone felt they needed to copy the world in for it. And I think that's something that's really, really common at the moment, particularly, because we're not potentially all in an office together at the same time. Um, then the last one I'm going to really talk about is that lack of clear priority. So remember, thinking about that urgent, important, deadlines, timescales, all of that stuff, and making sure that you actually set those priorities. And again, ask for help. You know, if at any point you think you need some help on any of these things, just ask your manager, your teacher, your friend, a colleague, whatever it is, because most people can easily see someone else's priorities where it might be hard to see your own priorities. Again, any thoughts, views, opinions on that? <clears throat> Procrastination. Lottie, our favourite thing at the moment. We talk about it quite regularly because we've just been in the office and then we're like, we'll get a coffee, we'll have a chat about this, we'll have a chat about that. Um, procrastination is effectively just putting something off. You know, whether it's because we don't want to do it, whether it's time consuming, whether it's actually boring, you know, which is my personal one. Um, if something's boring, I'm very, very likely to try and look for something more exciting to do. Um, or something that's quite lonely, potentially, something I'll always put off as well. You know, if I'm doing my own report, I'm, I'm more likely to engage with people if I'm doing other working together. Um, the key with procrastination is actually check and recognise that you're doing it. You know, we do say this regularly to each other in the team that we are clearly procrastinating for 10 minutes because we don't want to talk about funding rules or something like that. Um, so we need to recognise that we're doing it, work out why we're doing it. And sometimes it's just being honest with yourself and saying, I just don't like doing it. It's an essential part. Do I every single morning look forward to opening up my emails? No, I don't. And sometimes I'd much rather have a chat first about what we're going to do that day than look at my email. However, that's not always helpful. So it's about making sure you recognise it, you work out why you're doing it, and then adopt a couple of strategies. And we use these on a day-to-day -day with the team. And we do it to each other as well, and we use it as a kind of a group activity. So again, if you've got a group of colleagues or friends or people in the workplace where you can almost adopt strategies together, that gets really interesting and, and actually can make it more fun as well, more team bonding. Um, Break the habit. If you know you're doing it, just just do it. To steal a uh, phrase from a well-known brand there, which I'm not sure if I can plug brands on these sort of things. 
but just do it in essence. If you know you're doing it, just break the habit and just get on with it, just do it. Um, identify the unpleasant consequences. And I'm not saying this, if, if I don't do this, I'm gonna get sacked. I'm not talking about those unpleasant consequences. I'm talking about the stuff like, if I don't do it now, that means I probably can't take a, a break later on, or I can't have lunch, or I'm not gonna be able to finish on time or early. Those sort of unpleasant consequences. I wouldn't be expecting you to go, oh my God, if I don't get this done in the next hour, then I'm gonna get sacked. Obviously, different workplaces, different rules, different processes, but again, Always ask for help. Uh, create rewards. Um, within our team, we have some people who get biscuits, they set themselves in alarms, it's a coffee break, whatever it is, create yourself a little reward, whether it's a five minute walk around the garden or an extra snack at lunch, whatever it is, create yourself that reward that makes you get it done. And it sounds obvious, it sounds a little bit simplistic, but it definitely does work. That idea of, right, I need to bash out this report, I'm gonna get it done and then I'm gonna go get that coffee from Costa, whatever it is that works for you. Um, and one that I really, really like is setting a time onto something. Actually going, right, I'm gonna get that done in 10 minutes, and actually I'm insanely competitive, mostly so with myself. So if I'm against myself, it just gets more and more intense and more competitive, so I will always win. Um, so if I say I'm gonna do it in 10 minutes, in my head I'll get it done in eight minutes and it just gets faster and faster and faster and you get more productive all the way through the day. But again, that's how my mind works. You might need to use different techniques for this. Um, peer pressure, Lottie and I do this to each other, I reckon every day at the moment probably. Can you get this done? Can you get this done? Um, and I think that's a really, really, depending on your relationships, the colleagues or your school, your friend, whatever it is, actually having that relationship with someone who's going right, I need to get this done. Can you check up with me at lunchtime to see if I've actually done it or not? And that really does work because that folk of, have you done it? Uh, no. It isn't, it's, it's an awkward conversation sometimes because not only do you feel you've let that person down, even though it's a, an inter-working relationship potentially, but it does give you that motivation to do it. Keep your to-do list visible. I can't stress the importance enough of having a to-do list with everything written down in one place. But don't then write your amazing to-do list and chuck it in your bag and leave it in the office or whatever you're doing. Make sure you've got it there and it's ready to go. For some people, calculating the cost of your time can be really, really important and really beneficial. So actually say, right, this is how much I get paid. This is how much my time is per hour. Therefore, if I need to do this, it works out here. That works for some people. Personally, it doesn't motivate me, but for others, it does. And I know some people love that idea. Well, I'm getting paid 14 quid an hour. I've just bashed that out in 30 minutes. That means I've saved X. Some people love it. Um, and then the big one for me, and the one I am guilty of sometimes not doing, is doing something one at a time. You know, I will flick between tasks because sometimes I get bored. I might be putting something off. Whatever it is, I will flick. So actually doing one at a time for me is a really key anti-procrastination strategy because I will do something more interesting. Nine times out of ten, if anyone offers me something more interesting than doing emails, I'll be straight onto that, straight into that conversation, that meeting, whatever it is. As soon as you say, go do emails, it's just like, no, no. So it's actually making sure, right, bang, in my diary, emails are the first thing I do every morning. Get it done, get it out of the way, answer everything important, then I can go do some of the fun stuff but it's one at a time. <clears throat> As always, any thoughts, views, opinions? We've got a couple of thoughts coming through on the chat. So we've had going by the eat the frog in the morning theory, which we've heard a few times before. So getting that difficult, long task done first thing, so then it's off your plate, you don't have to worry about it. Absolutely, um, completely agree with that. And Anna has come in with another thought as well which is sometimes it's just quite nice to get that sense of achievement by ticking off the smaller jobs first I mean I know I like to do that if you feel like you've ticked off quite a lot they might be small tasks but you, it kind of gives you that motivation sometimes and um, to carry on but also she's made the point um as well of breaking up a big task so starting a big task in the morning doing something else in the day and then revisiting that afterwards which is a good idea too Absolutely agree with all of those. And a lot of this is about your mindset and your psyche and what works for you. 
you know, if you are motivated by competition, different techniques will work. If you're motivated by ticking, tick, 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 some things will work for you. So please make sure you adopt the strategies that work for you and your mindset and how you want it to work. Now, my absolute favorite, not just because the name makes me laugh every single time, but actually it really works for me when I am going through busy periods, is the pickle jar. Approach, theory, model to time management. Um, and the idea is you effectively think of your to-do list, your tasks, your workflow, whatever it might be, in a way of pebbles, sand and rocks. And you know, it's on there, it says what each one are, but effectively those big ones, those big rocks, are those really big important things that need to get done and they take up potentially a lot of your time, but in some cases they might not actually. So banging those five, six, seven big tasks off mean you've actually effectively halved your jar, even maybe three quarters empty then. Then you've got the pebbles, which is what your average task, like it might be doing one-to-ones, whatever it might be. And then you've got the sand or small little tiny pebbles, whatever terminology works for you again, which are those sort of everyday things, those less important things that you just naturally have to do, but aren't time bound. And this really, really works for me when I go into a busy period because I just basically, in my head, and on my to-do list, note down, right, what are those huge things I need to get done? What are the top five, top 10, depends how busy I am. And I bash those off, one after the other, no messing about, done, done, done. Then I go down to the next ones after that, and then I go down to the next one. And by the end of the week, everything's done, and you've probably got onto your, I want to do it one day list. So really nice way of just viewing your task, um, and this genuinely works for me on a regular, regular basis. I use this when it's becoming that moment where everything's coming together. And um, we find we have a lot of periods where you get everything coming together, including at one point. So it's actually making sure that you use this sort of method to really, really help you. However, there are others. And however you want to say Pareto, Pareto, I've, I change depending on what mood I'm in. But this model kind of gets you thinking about what takes the least effort and what gets the most reward. It's the 2080 model. Um, and for me, I do use this when I'm going through a period of potential procrastination. I start to think, what can I just get done, which is going to be really, really easy, but actually maximizes rewards. And I do like thinking about that sometimes. If it gets to probably a hump day, a Wednesday, and I'm thinking about it, I'm going, I don't really fancy doing that. Actually, what can I tick off that's going to be easy, quick, and I can just get it done? And for me, that's really, really important to look at that and think about those sort of things. Again, might not work for you, uh, but if it does, again, it's a lovely little technique just to get a load of stuff done quickly and the way to organise it and plan it. And then one that we have within the team, which sometimes is really funny when you're on a call with them, sometimes not so funny, but the Pomodoro technique. And if any of you know, the Pomodoro timer is basically like that little tomato. Uh, I think I've got it on the screen. It's like that little tomato that your nan might have had, your mum might have, whatever it is. And it's basically the kitchen timer for cooking and things like that. Um, and the idea behind this is that kind of time bound goals again. So you might say, right, I've got revision to do. This is one that I know the tutor team absolutely love talking about. If you've got 20 chapters to get done, you've got one day to do it in, break it down into manual dribble chunks. You know, I'm going to do a page every two minutes. I'm going to do a chapter every 15 minutes. And by the time you've done that, everything becomes easy and straightforward. Uh, we have a member of the team who uses this every blooming day and you're on a call with her and her alarm will go off and go, yeah, job done. And it's that element of just giving yourself that time to do something, but set a time bound goal to it. Something I really like to use, particularly when I'm report writing, because with reports, you end up wanting to reread it. You want to make sure you probably double, double, triple, triple check. And actually sometimes the second check, you've done it all. And then you're just either procrastinating or you're just double checking for the sake of it, triple checking, whatever it is. And I know within our team, we have people guilty of rereading emails 30, 40 times potentially before sending. And actually the tone, the, the way it sounded, the actual phrasing doesn't change at all. It's just people's perception of that email potentially. So again, nice to give yourself that Pomodoro technique if you've got revision, report writing, 
or potentially meetings. You know, I'm a big believer at the moment of limiting meetings as much as possible to a, a set time period. Right, we've got 20 minutes. What are we going to get done? What is our action best? Let's move on. Let's crack on. And for me, that's something that I'm using an awful lot more at the moment, just to get through the key points and key actions that we do. Again, this may not work for you. If you don't like pressure of time bound stuff, use one of the other techniques. But those are three that really, really work, um, depending on your psyche, depending on your organization, your perspective. But there's so many out there. If you Google time management techniques, there are hundreds of thousands. And I would always say just use one that works for you as an individual, then potentially your school, workplace, whatever it is. Um, and have a think about the right approach for you. Um, I always like talking about the four Ds. I'm not really sure why half the time, because again, it's that obvious element to it, but actually it's really, really easy to get. Um, and one of the things that I find a lot is actually deleting things or moving them to a correct file or getting them off your inbox. I don't know about you, but if I don't get rid of old emails, I find that I sometimes get naturally drawn back to those old emails potentially. So actually delete it, file it, remove it from site, make sure that if it's done its actions, you're not going back and rereading it again to check or triple check, unless you've made a major mistake or you've missed something. Um, delegating. If you have the opportunity to delegate, just delegate and be confident about delegating. Um, whenever I'm doing leadership and management training, I always get the first question, well, if I pass this, if I delegate this to someone else and they do it wrong, it's going to take me more time. And I always come back to that first point of, have you trained them to do it? Have you shown them how to do it? Then you should have confidence in your team. If you're giving someone a report to write and you've never shown them how you want the report to be written, then yeah, they're not going to get it right and you are going to spend more time fixing it and then training. But if you've given the correct training, you know the individual has the right knowledge, then delegate it and be supportive with delegating and delegate in the right way. Don't just send an email out saying, right, Lottie, can you do this now for me? You've got 20 minutes and that's it. Maybe pick up the phone, maybe say, hello, how are you? I need you to do something. Are you okay? Have you got time to do it? And then even if it is really important, you say, well, actually, it's really important. Can you drop that and still do it for me? But approach people the right way. Use those personal communication skills. That's really, really important within all avenues of life again. And defer it. One of my ones that I really, really like saying is, well, I'm not going to get it done this week. There's no point even thinking about it. I'm going to put it on to do this next week. And then again, the just do it. And actually, this is something that I come back to all the time. This idea of actually, I don't really want to do that report. It doesn't really add any value as far as I can see. However, other people find it. So I'm just going to do it, get it done, get on with something more fun. And as you might have noticed, one of my motivations is actually enjoying things, thinking things are fun. But if I just do the boring stuff, then I've got more time to actually crack on with those fun bits, the exciting things potentially. And again, that's very much about your psyche, your way of working. Um, and then the big one for me, I don't think you can do any of the ideas, strategies, approaches that we've talked about unless you're organised. And I think that's physically organised and mentally organised as well. Um, for me, cluttered desk wind me up. They absolutely wind me up. If I come in and see someone with stuff all over their desk, their phone's under about 20 different things. I'm going to go look in the office in a minute because I've got some of the team and I'm going to annoy people. But if you've got stuff everywhere, you're not set up, you've not got your keyboard set up, your laptop's perched on a couple of things of paper, whatever it might be, there is no way you're going to be effective. So absolutely declutter your desk, your workspace, um, and the same with your laptops or your computers and your phones as well. Um, Lottie knows this winds me up again because when you go onto people's thing and they've got 100,000 files all over their desktop, I don't see from the way I work that that's an effective organisation tool. Now for some people that works, totally understand it, great. But if everything isn't filed away correctly, you can spend quite a long time looking for things. So I do encourage people to organise your desktops, your outlook, everything. Get it organised, get it colour coded, get it set up correctly. Um, and I think leading on to that, everything should have its place. You know, if you need to print regularly, 
But every time you print, you have to stand up, open a cupboard, turn it on, connect it to your computer. You're wasting good 10, 10 15 minutes potentially. So actually make sure that it's ready to go. Make sure you have a workspace where everything is in its place and everything is usable potentially. And don't be scared of saying to someone, you know, I'm in the office, this printer takes about 50 minutes to print. Could we get it looked at? Don't be scared because everyone's probably got the same views and opinions on it as you have. Um, the one I said earlier is minimize the frequency and length of interruptions. You know, it's really, really easy to say and to, you know, in theory do, but you have to work into your workplace, your school, your environment, wherever you are at the moment, making sure that you set the rule that works. You know, I don't believe in closed door policies, even though I've closed the door to stop anyone coming in now. But I don't believe in that. However, sometimes I need to be left alone just to crack on with things. So I might set myself up in a different location. Or the best way, as always, is just communicate with people and say, look, I need to get this done. Would you mind giving me half an hour, please? Again, communication is the real key to all this stuff, actually talking to people. Um, meetings should last no more than an hour. I've actually changed this now over the last few months to actually they should be half an hour for me. I think a meeting, half an hour, whether it's remote or face-to-face, -face, is more than enough time to cover everything if the two parties are in agreement and you get that upfront contract in place. So Lottie and I will have many calls. Sometimes they do go over half an hour because we're talking about so many different things. But there are sometimes I say, look, I've got 20 minutes. Can we do X, Y, Z? Nothing else. And then we'll both go, but no, let's just get this done and then we'll see what time's left. And that's something I'm really, really pushing within the business at the moment. So actually, what do we want from these meetings? What is the purpose? And actually agreeing that upfront contract straight away. Um, and I do add that on, I spoke about it, that close the office door. Sometimes, especially at home potentially, if you're still working remotely, actually closing <coughs> the door that you're working in to actually stop people just coming in and saying, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a sandwich? Or in my case, the little one runs in like a superhero runs out. You know, having the, the physical barrier does work. But you can also do a physical barrier in a, a virtual way in turn your messaging service off. Close your emails if you're working or something. You know, turn your phone over on silent. Whatever technique, again, works for you to stop you getting distracted, to get through that part, to then actually be available to people. Because I am the world's worst for... I'll be talking to someone on a meeting, I'll be answering a Slack, I'll be answering an email, and I'll probably be looking at my phone sometimes. And actually, I know I have to turn things off to be able to concentrate on that individual and support them with whatever queries or questions they might have. Any thoughts, any views on that? Anything coming through the chat, Lottie? We've had a couple of people who are in agreement of messy desk, messy mind. That's a lovely, nice... Way yeah. of politely putting it, totally yeah. agree. Um, and Laura's come in saying it's rather annoying when people who are messy moan that they can't find anything. So it sounds like you guys are an organised lot. Preaching to the choir on this one, <laughs> Laura. Yeah. I cannot stress enough that when I come into the office, I expect it to be ready to go. You know, I don't expect to have to spend 20 minutes finding the correct wire because some individual has hidden it or moved it or taken it home or whatever it is. <laughs> so it's really, really important for me that we have that approach across the board um, and it works as well. Um, so, a little bit of a summary then. All of the things we've talked about, you need to relate to yourself, your workplace, your school, your business, your situation. You, know, you can't just decide to close the office door if you don't have an office or you don't have a door or you're not allowed to. You know, so please think about these things. You know, don't walk back into your office going, Right, I'm not gonna use Trello, which is our required mechanism because I've just been on a session that says I'm gonna use a paper to do this. Think about it and how it's gonna work for you, where you are in your workplace or your school or your situation. However, you can take these ideas and use them in different ways. <coughs> Think about procrastination. Think about are you doing it? Work out why you're doing it and create those strategies to stop yourself doing it. Use one of those different techniques, whether it's a to-do list, whether you know the pickle jar works, whether Pareto, Pareto, or however you want to say it works. Again, splitting things into different ways 
is a nice way of breaking down that routine activity as well. Sometimes actually when you do the same task every single day, you can get into auto flow. Breaking it down into one of these techniques can be really, really helpful. But the thing I would always say is pick a technique, maybe pick a merge of techniques, but making sure that when you do that, you're not trying to mix up eight or nine different theories potentially. Maybe pick a couple. You know, if you know you really react well to getting a reward, whether it's a snack, whether it's a biscuit, whether it's a walk around the garden, and you really, really like being time bound, you can merge those two things together. But I wouldn't try and do Pareto, pickle jar, time management, Eisenhower, whatever it is, all in one big thing. Because you'll spend hours doing it. It'd probably be quite cool, but you could have actually done your whole job in that day in the time you spent messing about with it potentially. So pick something, use it, and try and use it regularly. Um, and use that mix. Use a mix, but don't overthink it. For me, I talk to people, they're like, I'm just planning my week and it's already like 12 noon. Well, what have you been doing for the last three and a bit hours? You know, make sure whatever your plan is, it's being planned and you're using it and you're following it through effectively. Um, that is everything I wanted to talk about this morning. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I think with time management, it's about what works for you. Some of the stuff I've said is probably straightforward, probably slightly obvious, probably thinking, yeah, I'm gonna use that. And that's really the message of all these sessions. Go away, give it a go, see what works for you. Um, but thank you all so, so much for logging in today. Thank you very much for joining. We've recorded these lovely sessions, so they'll be shared. Uh